give me a child until it's seven and I will show you the man. They've been saying that for 400 years because they knew seven years was the program period and 95% of your life after that will be whatever that program is. 95% of your life is coming from the subconscious. Your life is a printout of your subconscious behavior. Before you can become conscious, if you don't have any programs, what are you going to be conscious of? What kind of programs are required to live on this planet? I say, how do you get them? Theta is hypnosis. You just watch. You watch your parents, you watch your siblings, and your community, because you have to learn how many hundred thousand rules, think about it. Just to be a functional member of a family and a functional member of a community, there are rules. I teach an infant these rules. I say, oh, you don't have to. First seven years, they just they observe it and just download it. And, and, and then I say, well, why is it relevant? Because this is the unfortunate fact. 95% of our life, this is a fact, comes from those programs in the subconscious. Every day, only about 5% of their life are you using conscious, which is creative. And you don't see it because it's called subconscious, below conscious. I can feed you with an idea that this pill that we just got from the pharmaceutical company, it's the greatest, best thing for your issue. And I give you this pill and you get better. And then later you find out it was a sugar pill and everybody goes, yeah, that's called the placebo effect. And I go, what does it really mean? I said, you didn't get healed by the pill, you got healed by the belief in the pill. And I go, well, yeah, that, that's what placebo is all about. And at least one third, minimum of one third of all medical intervention is, uh, it's the placebo effect that where the healing comes from. That's a result of positive thinking. W what about negative thinking? Uh, and this is what we don't talk about, but the reality is it's equally powerful in regard to affecting your biology as is positive thinking, but it works in the opposite direction. A negative thought is called the nocebo effect, can cause any disease and, and you can die. If you believe you're going to die, you can die from the belief. So uh, we really have to watch out because as psychologists would tell us, 70% or more of our thoughts are negative and redundant, replaying the same negative thoughts. I go, if, if thoughts had nothing to do with it, fine. But thoughts, positive or negative, shape our biology. And all of a sudden it says, well, now it's time to wake up because our negative thinking is, is manifesting a negative life experience. Well, we have to recognize, number one, that 95% of our behavior is coming from subconscious. So a child is going to record for seven years and they're gonna record you, you have a new baby. That baby is gonna look at you because you are the parent. They, the first thing a baby learns in the first week or two of life, who's the parent? Very important, because that's the reference point. If anything goes in their life, they're gonna look at the parent first thing. A, a child on a playground uh, is on a swing, falls off the swing on the ground. First thing it does is look at the parent. If the mother's like, ha, ah, the kid starts crying. But if the mother goes, get up and get back on a swing. The kid gets back up on a swing. It's reflection. So you have to recognize a child is going to observe every move of you. And then you also have to recognize, well, hell, if 95% of it is coming from my invisible programming, I'm going to pass on the family pattern unconsciously. And basically said, you come from a poor family and you could struggle your whole life and try to get rich, but you're not going to make it. And if you come from a rich family, you could be stupid your whole life and make it. Not because it was thinking, but it was unconscious behavior that was downloaded from rich families into kids, uh, which is unconscious. So they're, they're making the right moves unconsciously. If they engage their conscious mind, then they look stupid, but it's unconscious. And that's the same thing with poor people. Poor people have beliefs from the family. Oh, you can't make it. Life's a struggle. Things are hard. Who do you think you are? And if that's the program you get, then 95% of the day you will sabotage yourself. And that's why poor people stay poor and rich people stay rich, because of the programming. When you're thinking, that's a conscious mind function. The answer's not out here, it's inside. So the moment you're thinking, you let go of driving the vehicle because you went inside. I go, well, it doesn't mean whatever you're doing, you stop walking or driving the car or doing a job. Th those are programs in the subconscious because you've repeated them over and over again. So the subconscious is autopilot. When the conscious is busy, Autopilot drives a vehicle. Point is, when conscious is busy, it's not observing what's going on. So let's say we're having this conversation in a car, and I've been driving for 10 minutes, and we've had this great conversation, and all of a sudden I look out the window, I go, you know, I haven't paid attention to the road while we have the conversation. But I go back and say, 
uh, can, can I say what the conversation was about? Yeah, we talked about this and this and this. And I say, and what was on the road during that 10 minutes? You go, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. So I said, how was your driving? And I go, it was whatever way you learned how to drive. If you had a bad driving instructor, then you were driving 10 minutes with lousy driving. The things you like that come into your life come in because you have a program that supports them. But anything you struggle with, work hard at, put a lot of effort into making it happen, why you're working so hard, inevitably you have a program that doesn't support that conclusion and you're trying to override the program. So uh, you don't need to do a lot of shrink and psychology stuff. You just look at your life and say, where am I struggling? Because wherever you're struggling, inevitably it's a program in your subconscious that does not support that destination you've been looking for. The conscious mind uh, is creative and can learn in any number of ways. Read a self-help book, go to a lecture, listen to this program, and conscious mind's going to get some awareness. And I go, yeah, but subconscious mind doesn't learn that way. Subconscious mind learns in two fundamental ways, naturally. Hypnosis, which is the first seven years. And after age seven, how do you put new programs in? Repetition. Practice. You want to drive a car, you didn't learn, learn how by just getting in the seat and put the key in. You had to practice driving the car. You want to learn uh, the alphabet. How many times did you go from A to Z? Uh, you know, try to go to A to Z before you can complete it. And once you completed it, you didn't have to go back and do it again. So two phases. You want to train the subconscious mind? Hypnosis. Uh, repetition. The, uh, I like the last one because there's a new phrase that's bandied about called fake it till you make it. Mm. Meaning if you're not a happy person, I say you want to be a happy person, then repeat all the time. I'm happy. I'm happy. I say, well, you don't look happy or anything. You say, no, I, who am I talking to? By repetition, I'm talking to subconscious. Okay. If subconscious gets I am happy and 95% of your life comes from that subconscious, there will be a point once the subconscious got I am happy, you don't have to say it again. Repetition is a, is a habit. You, it's making habit. So you got to do something religiously in a sense of repeating it, repeating it, repeating it to make it work. The subconscious mind being habitual, not creative, habit, only learns in, in two fundamental ways. I said the hypnosis, which every night when you go to bed, just when you're just falling off into sleep, consciousness is disconnecting. The next period of your brain operation while your consciousness is disconnected is theta, which is the same brain function as in the first seven years. So if you put a pair of earphones on at night with a program of what you would like to be true in your life, as soon as your conscious mind disconnects, that program is playing. It's not playing into your conscious mind, that's shut off. It's now going straight into the subconscious mind. So it's called auto hypnosis. So scientists have studied what is called mind wandering. I said, what is mind wandering? I said, well, your conscious mind could be focused on a task or your conscious mind could go off into a, you know, think about things, okay? Uh, and, and the relevance about that is when the conscious mind is staying in the front, you're in absolute control, wishes, desires, what you want, conscious mind, creative, you're in control. But the moment your conscious mind takes off into a thought or starts thinking or whatever going on, uh, it lets go of the wheel, the autopilot takes over, okay? So the idea is this, if your mind is wandering, then you're being run by the subconscious. Conscious mind wishes and desires, subconscious mind program. Well, what if you took the wishes and desires and made those programs? Ah, then guess what? You don't even have to think about it. You will automatically 95% of the day be playing behaviors to manifest those wishes and desires. Okay. So reprogramming the subconscious with wishes and desires means you don't even have to think about it. You will be successful because 95% of the day, your program automatically will be seeking. Knowledge is power. We have been deprived of knowledge. We are operating as powerless individuals in a world. When we are so powerful, it's, it's unimaginable. We are really very powerful. And yet we have been programmed to be not powerful. And that's how other people control us. And I love my life because I go out and say, no, you are so powerful. You just, have been, you just didn't have the knowledge. Uh, knowledge is power. A lack of knowledge is a lack of power. And we've been deprived of knowledge of who we really are. A, you've been programmed. And uh, if you don't like the program, you don't like the way it's turning out, well, then B, you can reprogram it. And you could get the things you want. 
We have to eliminate the fear because fear is the biggest motivator in our planet today. I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, and how much money are you gonna pay? Whatever money it takes to, you know, to allay any fear that I have. Money is not an object at that point. It's like, what if you didn't live in fear? It's like, wow, now you can use all that money for some good stuff. Uh, and basically it says, look at your life, just as we just talked about, look at your life. If it's not working right, you can change this. It, it, you have to recognize if it's not working right, it's not your conscious mind that took you down that path. It was your programming. And if you change your programming, you can have a whole new life. You can get rid of virtually any disease and, and change your life completely by changing that programming.